Welcome to the Boston University Sing Imagineering Lab, more commonly known as the Tinker Lab. In this training video, you will learn the basics of staying safe and properly handling machines so you can enjoy the facilities at your disposal. Once you enter the workshop, there are a few things to keep in mind. Before you come to the lab, remember to wear closed-toed shoes and keep jewelry, wristwatches, headphone wires, and similar items out of the way when you're here. These accessories could get caught in the machines and are a potential safety hazard. Once you're ready to go, you can store your belongings on the student-made coat rack to make sure they're out of the way. Finally, you're ready to get to the fun part. When crossing the line into the work area, always remember to put your safety glasses on, even if you're wearing glasses. A lathe is a machine commonly used to resize, reshape, and thread rods. On our lathe, you can put wood, aluminum, or plastic, but not steel. To begin, fasten the stock securely into the chuck and remove the tightening key. Then, you can turn it on and adjust the speed to the proper setting. Additionally, for more specific cuts, you can flip the switch to thread rods. The compound miter saw, also known as the chop saw, is used to cut stick lumber. Begin by pulling out the bolt and securely bringing the handle to the top. Unscrew and lift the trigger on the front handle while sliding the whole blade left or right to your desired angle. To adjust the vertical angle, loosen the back spindle while holding onto the blade. Choose your angle and retighten the spindle. Securely hold your lumber against the fence, either with your hand or a clamp. Firmly press both the thumb and index finger trigger, then bring the blade down and push it back through your wood towards the fence. The miter saw can only make straight cuts and isn't very good for wider pieces. Now we head over to the band saw, a much different type of saw. Once your stock is in, thin and precise cuts can be made, but always remember to remove your hand from the cutting plane before use. I know, another SAR again? This is the last one, I promise. The scroll SAR is used to make precise cuts. Wood and plastic can be used, but not metal. The machine is too delicate. Before cutting, remove your hand from the cutting plane and adjust the speed. Then it's time to cut. Moving away from saws, we have the drill press, a tool used to drill holes into various materials. It is more precise and powerful than handheld drills and will make perfectly perpendicular holes. Begin by clamping down your stock and make sure it is aligned properly. Use the chuck key to secure your drill bit and make sure the bit is straight and centered. Power on the machine and turn the handle to lower the bit and drill into your stock. The belt sander is used to smooth out all the rough edges you might get from cutting and drilling. Wood, plastic, and aluminum can be used at this machine, which has two sanding options. When sanding, never angle the stock up. This causes kickback. Only sand angled down or straight. The wood planer is used to create boards with even thickness throughout. First, turn on the vacuum to suck up the dust. Then adjust the height of the planer. Next, feed the wood stock into the machine. Once your stock is in, it'll be pulled through and there's no need to push. If your piece is too long, ask a friend or an advisor for help. Repeat this process until the desired thickness is attained and make sure that once you're done, you clean up any excess sawdust. The joiner is used to cut flat surfaces and straight edges on pieces of wood. Similarly to the planer, we begin by connecting a vacuum. Now, when pushing the board through, you need to apply as little pressure as possible because the feeding technique is directional. If your piece is small, use a push block, and as always, clean up once you're done. The bench grinder is used to grind down rough edges on steel parts. It can also be used to sharpen steel blades and tools. No aluminum can be used on this machine, only steel. It is normal for sparks to fly off when grinding steel, 
so always wear your safety goggles. The NC mill moves on three axes and can machine wood, plastic, and aluminum. Unlike the drill press, where you use a drill bit, on the NC mill, you use an end mill bit. While drill bits are designed to cut straight down, end mill bits have sharp flanks which allow them to cut sideways as well. To set up an end mill bit, first you have to remove the collet from the machine. Turn the Z arm all the way up to the top and then just a little bit past that limit. Place the collet into the special key hole and use this collet wrench to unscrew the collet nut. Then the collet sleeve can be removed and you should be able to remove the bit by hand. To put it back in, simply reverse the process. Then, to start up the spindle, push the power lever down, and once the machine is running, you can adjust the spindle speed by turning this crank handle. Make sure to keep the RPM out of the red zone, and when cutting metal, consult the RPM chart next to the machine. To turn off the spindle, push the power handle back up to the middle position, then pull this mechanical stop lever to bring the spindle to a stop. Never touch the spindle when it is rotating. And as always, ask an advisor if you need any help running this machine. Similarly to the NC mill, the CNC mill is used to shape items made of foam and wood, but not metal. The CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control. Simply input SDL files into a computer program and the tools will machine the part. This machine can be tricky, so don't hesitate to ask an advisor if something doesn't make sense. In addition to the heavy duty machines, we have a plethora of hand tools and power tools to work with, such as hammers, wrenches, drills, heat guns, sanders, buffers, rotary saws, and dremels, just to name a few. Check the inventory online to see if we have a specific tool, or ask a lab advisor if you have trouble finding it. If you use one of the cordless power tools, remember to place its battery in a charging station when you are done, to ensure that it's ready to go when the next person wants to use it. The electronics area, located near the entrance to the lab, is used to build circuits and other electronic devices. Equipped with soldering irons, oscilloscopes, and a large variety of circuit elements which are located in the blue electronic stock cabinet. There are a lot of options when it comes to electricity. We currently have five 3D printers in the lab, including a Form 2 by Formlabs, Flashforge Inventor, Ultimaker 3, and Mojo by Stratus. Printers can take different materials including PLA, ABS plastic, PETG, resin, and many others. To use a printer, upload your design to the computer. If you're not sure where to start, ask a lab advisor for help. More information about 3D printers can be found on the Tinker website. Always remember to ask for help from the lab advisors if you can't figure out how a machine works. All those machines seem great, but you might be wondering, where do I get all the materials to work on my projects? Does it cost money? Well, we have a wide range of free parts to choose from. In and around our blue drawers, on the way between the electronics and machine areas, there are many different things. There's sheet metal, plywood, dowels, PVC pipes, metal rods, wood pieces, nuts, bolts, screws, and much more. For finishing off your designs, the paint and chemical storage is the place to go. You'll find a variety of paints, wood stainers, and other materials inside. Just make sure to close the doors when taking or putting away your item. When your project is finished or in progress, you can store it in one of the storage lockers or on the shelf by the turnpike windows, with your name, email, and the date taped to it. Finally, you have all you need to know to start using the Sing Imagineering Lab. Once you complete the training quiz, you'll be able to use your newly acquired knowledge to create whatever projects you like.